Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we've got the uh, pleasure of working on a Shimano Charter Special. It's the TR2000 lever drag reel, and the interesting thing with this lever drag reel is that it has a level wind feature. So most of the time you don't find too many of the lever drag reels out there that are, that are also driving a, uh, a level wind uh, line guide. So this one belongs to John. He's president of the local uh, Saltwaters uh, Anglers Fishing Club. And uh, we're going to take it apart, service it up for him. And uh, in, the, in the process, we'll show you how this is done so that if you have one of these, uh, you'll be able to tune it up. And if you don't have one of these but are interested in this particular reel and maybe thinking of purchasing it, well, it'll show you how this reel is made and uh, what some of the componentry is inside of it. So I start by taking off the exterior pieces, which involves this nut cap, which is holding on the handle screw. And uh, while we do that, I'd like to thank our first responders, essential personnel, law enforcement, EMTs, all everybody in medical, all of the folks that are on the front lines in terms of providing us the supplies we need to stay safe during this pandemic. Your efforts truly are appreciated. Thank you for everything it is that you do. All right, well, we took the nut off. That uh, leaves a little cap here. And while I'm doing this, this is a good time to tell you to take pictures along the way. Now, of course, I'm taking pictures because I have it on a video, but you don't need to do videos. Uh, take uh, still photography with your camera or with your cell phone or uh, any other device you choose to use. But it tells you certain orientations of pieces and parts, and it tells you uh, how to get back to where you started from if you get lost along the way. It's very important. All right, so I took the collar off. This is the main gear now. It's only a single speed. We're going to take off the lever now. And to do that, you remove this preset adjuster. And I think this is where everybody kind of gets not only nervous, but kind of gets lost when they go to reinstall. So we'll just make sure you're aware of how this goes. There's a cap and a spring. And I'm putting those into my parts tray just because it's a convenient place to, uh, to keep them located. I use the bottom of a jug. And uh, the first thing out then was that cap and spring. Then you have a, a preset adjuster. Now on the back of the preset adjuster, you're going to notice that there's two triangular pieces opposing each other, about 180 degrees straight line sort of thing. Those are going to provide the ramps that's going to put the tension to pull that um, uh, adjuster in. You want to get to the point on this where those two triangular indentations are over by the free spool. So notice the orientation of the spool. Notice the orientation of your arm. It's very important when you go to reinstall this. So we're going to take off the arm. And then underneath that, there's a felt washer kind of a thing here. That's uh, important. <coughs> it's, I, I said felt. I think it's a hard washer. And now we can get to removing the side plate. <coughs> Excuse me. To do that, there's three screws on the, the face piece that provides the line guide for the arm to travel. Two of them have these little collar buttons on them, so don't lose them. That's the bump stops for, for free spool and for full uh, lever drag. The one in the middle is just a tapered screw. It's a small screw, so pay attention to it. You can lose it. And it's different from the other screws, so I like to keep all of those in one corner of my, my parts tray so I don't lose them. We have one, two, three, four five screws that we're going to take off now that's going to enable us to get to the internal workings of this reel. Now, five screws is a, it seems like a lot, and if it is a lot, a lot of folks ask me if they can use the, uh, the mechanical screwdriver to take these out. And generally, taking them out, I don't have as much problem as putting them in. I do have a problem with those mechanical screwdrivers on the way in because they provide an awful lot of torque. And on graphite cases or plastic cases on reels, you can crack them. So if you're going to use that to put these back in, uh, then please be careful and stop the screw short of being tight. Go that last turn or two by hand. 
just so that you're certain that you're not going to shatter that side plate. You'll notice I put all of the screws on my table first. That's because I wanted to make sure that the screws weren't different. We did notice on that outer trim ring that the screws were different. And we did note that that small one uh, with the taper belonged up top. And you want to do the same thing with the outer screws as well. That should enable us now to remove the side plate, which we can. You can see we got a couple of things going on here now. So let's, let's just review those with you. We have a trim ring. This is just sitting in here. So if this popped out while you were taking things off, notice that there is a taper on the back end of the ring, and that sits in the guide here. What is the purpose of that ring? Well, it controls a brake. There's two spool brakes here on the side, and the, uh, uh, those spool brakes will control the casting on this reel. <clears throat> we have a main gear, and we have a pinion gear. Let's go take those out. And you'll notice when we pull the main gear that we have an anti-reverse dog here. That's going to be important in terms of resetting this because your anti-reverse ratchet is on the back of the main gear. And uh, we'll show you how to do that in just a moment when we go to put this back together. All right, we're going to clean the inside. The inside of this reel is very clean. John said he wasn't even sure how many times he fished it. He, he didn't know why it got uh, relegated to the shelf, but it did. And uh, he had just asked me to make sure that it's all tuned up and ready to go again for him this upcoming season. I'm going to use a, a fishing reel oil for the, the bearings. I like to oil my bearings rather than put grease on them, particularly if they're going to be in a salt water application. I just noticed that there's a shim washer on the back side of this, so let's make sure we pay attention to that. This gear is very clean, so if there's anything wrong with this reel at the moment, it's probably it doesn't have a lot of uh, grease in it, so we're going to take care of that right now. I'm going to use a fishing reel grease just like I did the oil. This is Pen Precision Reel Grease. It's available online and in, uh, in most of the retail stores like a Bass Pro or a Cabela and, uh, and others. It's uh, generally available. You don't have to buy the whole pound container that will last you a lifetime. Uh, these things are sold in two ounce containers as well. They're very affordable, so don't be afraid to, to go out and do it. It's not going to cost you a lot of money. I'm also going to take that grease and put a thin coat onto the shaft. Then we're going to start by just kind of setting this up a little bit. We know that this dog is not going to work like it is. We're going to put this in, start it, and then we have to push down on that tab. So push down, we have to pull up on that tab, push it through, and then you'll have a functional anti-reverse. So when you go to set this, you pull up on the tab with the spring set, pull up on the tab so that it can engage that click washer that we were showing behind. Okay, that's it for now on the, on the, the, the drive side plate. We'll come back to the uh, pinion gear in a moment. I am going to take a hard brush and just get the old grease out of that... Uh, that pinion gear. You want to check the gears just like I did with the other one. You want to make sure that there's no chips or cracks or bends in them. You would have felt that in performance, particularly if it's your reel. You would feel that there's a grinding going on and uh, that generally is an indication that something got hung up in the, in the gearing and, and kind of broke that way. For now I'm going to put that into the, uh, the side plate here. But when I go to reinstall I'm going to put it onto the shaft of the spool because it's easier that way. Remembering that this belongs with the handle, I'm going to put that into the cup that's in my parts tray. We'll turn our attention to the back side now. The only thing you need to check on the back side is this main gear here. It's called an idler gear. It's going to drive your level wind. And you want to make sure that all of the teeth inside that wheel are there. There's two sets of gears. There's an inner gear that's going to be driven by the spool and there's an outer gear that's going to drive, whoops, the, the outer gear is going to be driven by the spool, the inner gear is going to drive this worm gear here. Okay, so it seems like that's doing fine. I'm going to back the line guide off to the side and we're just going to check the pawl, which we do by removing the cap here. And 
and that should just kind of come out with a little bit of effort. That just not, that's a trim ring. There we go. That's your paw. And you want to make sure that the teeth are even. It's a V-shaped teeth, tooth, teeth, whatever it may be. And you want to clear out that old grease from the channel that sits on each side of it. If that's dried grease, it's not going to perform effectively and it will cause you problems down the road. All right, we're going to put that back into the cavity just where it fell out. And take that little trim ring and put that over the top of it. And then I'm going to hold it. We're, well, it looks like we're seated now. We'll go ahead and put the, the cap back on and then we need to test when we put it back on that it's in the grooves. And you kind of know right away if it's in the groove or not because when you go to turn it, if it's not in the grooves of the worm gear, it won't move back and forth and we actually feel like it's stuck. In this case, we've got it in the groove, so we're good there. You do not have to put grease onto this gear because it's a, uh, it's a petroleum based gear and that petroleum based gear is uh, enough to self lubricate. Alright, that comes off to the side now. Now we want to just do the spool maintenance, which is where your drag is, and there should be two more washers in there. And I'm probably going to cut this leader off because it's hard to work on this particular reel with that on. Alright, we're going to take the pressure plate off of the collar for the pressure plate. Notice when you, you get this reel that it will say unscrew. These are two little brakes. I'm going to pull them off because if I don't pull them off they're going to be on the floor. And this one says unscrew when it's pointed in that direction. So it's a counter uh, intuitive one where you're going clockwise to unscrew. All you do is just that. You unscrew this. You pull that up. You have a cavity in there with a little bit of light uh, grease. We have our pressure plate. This one's nice and clean. I'm not sure that John has fished this one very much at all. And I'm just going to go ahead and wipe that old grease out of the collar here. Now we have our bearing, and, and I would say, based on what I'm seeing here on the washer, that uh, this hasn't been fished. Uh, or if it has, it's been very limited. There's two bearings inside of here. And actually, before I go over there, let's go back to this side here, because I think there's another bearing under here. So let's just I'm put that one bearing off to the side. That, that bearing belongs in here, so why don't we just go ahead and put that in there so we don't lose it. And this is where you need to be careful because things can fall out of these, these reels pretty easily. And there's a lot of small little things that can fall, like these screws here. So just please pay attention as you're doing this. You don't want to uh, spend an inordinate amount of time looking on your bench or on the floor or other places for these. I'm doing the same thing here that I did when I took this reel apart. I'm just putting the screws that I'm taking off right alongside the, the parts that are taking it off of because I want to make sure that all of those screws are the same because if they're not the same you need to note the location of them. We're talking about falling out. This little cross piece wants to fall out from that spool so that's just to take it off right now. Get that out of the way. So lever drag reels are, are not that difficult to work on. There's a little difference of a sequence. You're seeing that here. And you just need to be aware of what that sequence is when you go to, uh, to take it apart. And that's why pictures and schematics are helpful if you haven't worked on these types of reels. Kind of think of the schematic as a preview. It's going to tell you what's inside of it. It will show you an exploded picture of it. And you'll be able to uh, anticipate what you might find, like those bearings there. All right, so now we have the cap off. And we should be able to pull the assembly through. And I thought that there would be a bearing there. There's not. Uh, there's just bushings. All right, so there is a bearing hiding there. So I was right anyway. There you go. Sometimes you're right even when you think you're wrong. There's a little collar. We're just going to leave that on there. And I want to get oil on that bearing just like we did on the others. There's some old grease on the shaft. So let's get the old grease off. Followed by putting new grease back on. And you don't have to put a lot on there. As a matter of fact, if you put a lot on there, it's only going to squeeze off. So don't uh, don't go crazy with the grease here. All right, we've got that little copper shim goes on the bearing, and this whole assembly goes back on. 
Usually it knocks that bearing out of the top there, which is fine because we're going to come, come ahead and service that. We'll just put that there for the moment. Seat that. We're going to grab the, the collar here then. Now we're going to take those little screws that came out and put them back in. And you might need a micro driver for this. If you do, it's always good to set it up ahead of time so that you uh, you don't lay things down and, and start looking for a, a tool that you need early on. I guess it's like the great chefs do, right? They, they know they're going to make a recipe. They put all of their stuff out ahead of time. And that way uh, they don't have to be distracted as they're going about uh, preparing that meal. All right. Those of you that know me, know me and small pieces and parts don't agree all the time. So why don't I ask you to subscribe while we're going through all of this. Instead of just watching some uh, dead time, if you subscribe, please hit the notifications button if you like this kind of thing. I work on all kinds of reels. I think yesterday I did a bait caster. Uh, I've worked on... Uh, conventional salt water reels. Here's a lever drag salt water reel. I've worked on spinning reels, antique, as well as uh, newer models. And uh, basically I follow the same kind of thing, trying to provide you a step-by-step -step narration of how to do that, not only to solve your maybe your immediate issue, but also to have you learn a little bit about the reels themselves. And if you're thinking about buying them, you'll see how they're made and uh, you'll see how these uh, come together and how to service them if you happen to have one of them. So if this is a, uh, a good thing to do, and if you subscribe, please hit the notification button. Also, if you have questions uh, along the way, please leave comments, uh, and I try to answer those questions as best I can if I know the answer to them. Don't worry, if I don't know the answer to them, I'll tell you I don't know the answer to them. I get a lot of interesting questions. Okay, we took this burring out poked it out with that stud, so let's go put that back over the axle shaft again. Now, you do not have to lubricate the drag washers. Uh, a lot of our manufacturers like Avet and that will tell you do not, absolutely do not do that. Uh, so, as a general rule, I do not provide any kind of lubrication uh, to them. and. Um, you, you can, but uh, it's not recommended. Avid will tell you just scrub it down with soapy water. Now, of course, this isn't an Avid reel, but uh, they'll tell you just scrub it down with soapy water, and that's enough to keep them fresh. This one's clean. It hasn't, uh, has no evidence of even being used. Okay, we've reinstalled the bearing on this side. We're going to go ahead and put that pressure plate back on. Now, remember, we unscrewed it in the clockwise direction, so when we go to put it back on, we've got to screw it in the counterclockwise direction to get it seated. And hand tighten is what needs to be done. That's it. And now that I did that, I'm going to take that spool gear or the pinion gear. And now I'm going to put it on there because I find it's easier to do it that way when I go to reinstall the reel than if I try to match through the uh, main gear. All right, there we go. Remember, we have those two little brakes. We want to get those brakes on. Thank goodness they're a different color. They made them blue so you can actually stand out in my parts tray. And you can see why the value of the parts tray because this is crazy in terms of all these little pieces and parts that have come out of here. Okay, we want to take that ring. Remember what we said, this is a tapered ring. We want to reinsert that ring into the, the side plate. We're going to grab our wheel body. I should have cut this line. <laughs> Let's note to self. We're going to do that right now. Just because that line tends to get trapped in the uh, frame, and then it's uh, you can't understand why your, uh, your reel isn't turning, and it's because the, the line's trapped behind the spool. So, so we're going to do it that way. Now you've got to match your that, that T crossing. So take your axle shaft and turn it until you, you see it in that groove there. And we're sometimes this takes more than one try. 
straight up and down, straight up and down. There we go, just sort of snap in there. Okay, so that's your mounting of your reel. We've serviced the back end, we've, we've greased and uh, worked on the spool bearings, we've worked on the pole, we've provided the oil there. We can put a little bit of oil onto the worm gear. And now we just want to marry this thing back up now. So, as I mentioned, it's easier for me to do it with the spool gear on. You may find it differently, and if that's the case, that's all right too. All right, we have this whole assembly together. Notice there's a bump out here, so when we go to, to install, get that as close as you can to the bump. And then you just generally need to, to, to move it a little bit so that you can mesh those gears. Once you've done that, then you can come across here grab the four case screws. So we're just working backwards from the way that we took this off now. And this is the section I said, if you, uh, if you need to use a mechanical screwdriver, maybe you don't have the hand strength or that, you can start, but please don't, uh, don't tighten it down all the way with them. I wouldn't want to be the, the fellow that uh, tells you go ahead and use that and then find out that you've cracked the case. All right, I do this in a north, south, east, west kind of a a way to go. I want to make sure that we have equal torsion across the, the plane here. Hmm. We're off just a little bit there. I can feel that we're not seating. So the north, south, east, the west is going to keep the tension on this. Sometimes you're going to do a lever drag wheel and you're going to find out there's a tremendous amount of spring strength un under the reel. And if that's the case, then you really want to make certain that you're doing it this way. Because if you start tightening in a counterclockwise, uh, I'm sorry, in, in a rotational manner, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, uh, you might find that you're off on one side of a gap and you have a warp where you have uh, undue tension on the side plate, and that's all going to cause the, the same or similar issues. All right, the three of these go on. And we'll put that trim ring on, and we'll put that lever drag back on. So I mentioned that I'd, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. It's kind of what keeps my channel going. Uh, if and if you do subscribe, hit the notifications. We've talked a little bit about uh, asking your questions through the comment section, and I'll try and get you answers. If you're stuck on a reel, that's a good place to ask that, uh, that question. And if I know the answer, again, I'll be happy to, to let you know what I know. And if I don't know it, I will tell you I don't know the answer to your question. If uh, you have a reel that needs to be serviced, well, I do that too. And uh, if you want information on my service, we can I do that by mail. And I uh, can provide you that information if you send me an email to uh, the address on the business card that follows. Okay, we have the two with the bump stops. They go on each side of this. That flat tapered one goes in the middle. And we're getting closer to, to this one being tested and seeing if we don't have this right the first time. Every now and then you get stuck on this uh, positioning with the preset. Alright, the blue piece came up next. That washer. And you hook this over the top, kind of like that. Remember what we said, we want to start over on this corner here where the free spool is. Find your notches. Your notches should go in the, in the valley of that uh, indentation. Here's our cap and our spring. That goes next. Get it started. You're not going to be able to, to tighten this down completely yet. Okay, then we'll take that little copper ring there, a brass ring, that was a collar for the cap. Cap goes next. And our handle is up next. Handle nut. Put 
tighten that down. That's a 10 millimeter nut if you if you're wondering what it is. So set your 10 millimeter wrench out if you're going to be working on this. And then you want to get this flat side perpendicular to the hole. It generally is going to enable you to line the hole in a nut cap with the hole for the screw, which is what's happened here. That screw can come on next. Don't over tighten this one, you'll crack the cap. Make sure it's snug. Okay, there's nothing left in the parts tray, that's always a good sign. You got the end of reverse working, sometimes that falls out when you're tripping things. Let's uh, get this over to free spool. It's free spooling, let's go over here, see if we catch any drag or, oh, we don't have much of it. So let's, uh, let's go to the midpoint and tighten this down a little bit. You want to, you know, what you're doing right now is you're working for that first first piece. If you do uh, uh, where it's spinning at the first one, generally over at the top you're, you're done. And let's make sure we have our free spool, which we do. And that's it. That's the service of the Charter Special. It's the TR, the Triton 2000 lever drag. It's a beautiful reel. This one's hardly been used. And uh, it's got the extra added feature there of the lever wind. So a lot of times you don't get that level wind on the lever drags because they're fighting big fish and big fish is going to put a lot of torsion on these bars. So uh, it's uh, not unusual if you're trolling with a, a lever drag wheel that uh, you're going to tear that up. But that's the bigger sizes, right? That's the, uh, the 50Ws and the like. This one is more along the lines of a, uh, well, about the size of a pen jig master. And uh, in that case, uh, the fish that you're targeting probably will be okay for, um, I'm saying probably the engineers of this reel are telling us it will be okay for, uh, for fishing with the level wind feature. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, uh, again, please like the video. Uh, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle thanking our first responders again and wishing everybody a great day. Please stay safe during the pandemic, stay well, and stay watching. Have a great day.